Hi everyone. In today's video, we're going to be talking about a really key portion of the Java programming language, and that is inheritance. So like one of our previous videos where we talked about encapsulation, inheritance is one of the four main pillars of object-oriented programming design. So the total four are encapsulation, abstraction, polymorphism, and inheritance. Today's video, we're going to be talking about that fourth one, inheritance. When I think of inheritance in code, I think of ways to reuse code and to make our code more extendable for future use cases. Inheritance is one of those really important things to know about object-oriented programming in general, especially in a language like Java. And sometimes when it's taught, it's a little overcomplicated. So what I'm gonna do in this video is show the very basics on how to do some inheritance without the complications associated with the edge cases. Let's get to it and write some code that uses inheritance. All right, in IntelliJ, we're gonna go ahead and make a project called Inheritance Demo, and we're going to add sample code. In like normal, IntelliJ made a main method for us. We're gonna delete the hello world print, and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna demonstrate first how you could write code in one way, and then how you could write it in another way that uses inheritance. So in this example, we're going to be writing code for a pretend college athletic coordinator. This athletic coordinator needs to manage three different athletes, a dancer, a baseball player, and a basketball player. So let's go ahead and make an object for each of those individuals. So how we do that is we'd right click new Java class, and I'm going to do the dancer first. And then let's also create the baseball player and the basketball player. And then we're going to go ahead in the main method, we're going to instantiate all three of our objects. New dancer, baseball player equals new baseball player basketball player whoops all right so just like we normally instantiate our objects we give the type we give the name and we're gonna say dancer one and we indicate a new instance of the object that we're creating and we do the same thing for our other ones. All right, now that we have our three objects, let's go ahead and go into the dancer class. What I just did there is I hovered over the name and I did a control click or it'd be a command click on a Mac. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in some methods for what our dancer can do. And for the purposes of this, I'm not going to give a real implementation. I'm just gonna print out some information. So our dancer obviously can dance. Since it's the athletic coordinator we're talking to, let's go ahead and talk about when the dancer needs rest time. And let's make sure that the dancer is properly fed. All right, we'll go ahead and call that good. Now, once we go to the baseball player, the baseball player is not gonna dance, but the baseball player also needs to rest and eat. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy these methods into the baseball player class. And now the baseball player is going to also play ball. All right, and then now in the basketball player, same with dancer and baseball player, the basketball player has to rest and eat. But now the basketball player is going to shoot hoops. And now one other thing that I now I need to do for all three of them is they all are really trained. So now I have to go in and I have to create a train method. I'm gonna say training. And I'm gonna copy that into the others. All right, and then we go back to our main method and we can see when we do answer one dot, 
now we see the full list of everything that we would expect. The dancer can dance, eat, rest, and train. Similarly, the basketball player can eat, rest, shoot hoops, and train. Okay, so everything seems to be working as expected here, but you may be thinking to yourself, why do I have to copy all this code across these three different classes? Oh, that's a good question. You really shouldn't have to do that. In fact, long term, that's not a very good design idea because like we had to do earlier, we added this train method when we were at the basketball player. So then we had to go back and update the dancer and the baseball player. Let's say that we figure out that all three of them now need to do another method. We have to update three different files. Okay, well you might be thinking, that's not that big of a deal. I can update three files, I can copy paste, that's no problem. Ka-ching, ka-ching, see, all done. Well, okay, but what happens if instead of just a dancer, a baseball player, and a basketball player, we add in hockey, we add in soccer, we add in lacrosse, we add in tennis, you get the point. We start adding a lot of different player types and now our code just gets humongous and it becomes a maintenance nightmare because we have to go in and basically put in boilerplate similar code across all of these different types of athletes. Ah ha ha. What we can do instead is we can use inheritance where we can have a common thing that all of these athletes inherit from. So what we're going to do now is we're going to demonstrate inheritance. So if I right click, make a new Java class called Athlete. Now what I want to do is I want the train, rest, and eat methods all available in my Athlete class. Now if I go in to my Dancer, my Dancer now only can dance until I use Inheritance. And all I have to do, it's really simple, you use the extends keyword after your class definition right here. So dancer extends athlete. And let's see what we can find. Look at that. We have all the same methods we had before. Dance, train, eat, and rest. I'm even going to run the code to prove that it's working. And look at that we get the output we expect of resting by calling the rest method even though our dancer class doesn't have a rest method within it. And the reason that works is because we are inheriting from this athlete class who has a public rest method right here. Therefore, we can access it in our dancer class. And we hit this right here. Let's go ahead and update our other classes too. And we'll have it extend athlete and we'll go ahead and have our basketball player extend athlete now if I go to my main method just to demonstrate this is all working I will have my basketball player rest because she's tired I will have my baseball player play ball because he's really chomping at the bit and then we'll have the dancer get up and train for the day. All right, and as we can see, the dancer is resting, the basketball player is resting, the baseball player is playing ball, and now the dancer is training. Perfect. This is a really straightforward example of how inheritance can be your friend, and it's a very, very powerful feature of object-oriented programming. Just to give one more example of why inheritance can be so awesome, let's go ahead and create a new class called Hockey Player. Now our Hockey Player is going to extend Athlete. And now our Hockey Player will shoot the puck. Score! Now, let's make our hockey player. Now, you would normally think that the hockey player can only have the shoot the puck method, but actually it's gonna have everything under athlete. So now we're gonna have our hockey player. Eat. And then they'll shoot the puck. And there we have it. Those are the basics of inheritance.
Inheritance is a super duper powerful feature of Java and object oriented programming languages in general. I highly, highly recommend like encapsulation following the concepts of inheritance where you can. Now you don't want to overuse it because there are cases where it doesn't make sense. You don't want to write code just to make inheritance work. The point of inheritance is when it makes sense, you should use it. There are also a lot more other gotchas with inheritance when it comes to access modifiers and when you call constructors and how all that sort of stuff works. Those are future topics that we can talk about and I promise I will address those in future videos. Hopefully we helped that athletic coordinator out. That was actually a lot of fun showing examples of inheritance. It's a really powerful tool of object-oriented programming that you see in code all the time, and it's a really useful feature of the Java language. Thanks again for watching. I hope to get into more details of inheritance in future videos. If you like this video, please do smash that like button. I'd really, really appreciate it. I hope you have a good rest of your day. Thanks for watching the video, and have a good one. Take care.